understand the month we are in, then we begin to experience certain things we have no authority over. Okay? And it's, it's this same thing that has caused the church to be left uh, not understanding what we are supposed to be doing. Are you with me? Yes. This is the thing that has left the church in not knowing what we are supposed to do. This is a month uh, from the sacred calendar or the religious calendar. It is the eighth month. From the civil calendar, it's the second month. Because remember, it's just in Tushri, we're celebrating the Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year. Amen. Amen. Okay. So now we've entered a month which is not it is which is known as Ha Ha Shavan. Okay. What you can say? It is spelled in different ways, and it will help you. Others start with the letter K. All right. Like the letter the the, Baka, the alphabet letter we study. And let me write K sharp. Not right. Sharp one. Amen. Others they leave out the K and they just write K sharp one. Others even go further, they write. Amen. Those are the spellings when you, even when you Google, you may see those variety. However, that was a development at a later stage. Because originally, this month is also known as Bu. And you see it. In some scriptures, I'll show you. It is, it was known as Ma. Ma. Ke. Sha. Van. Now don't say Mac like in English. Uh -uh. Okay. <laughs> it's like the, the Africaners. The Africaners, for instance, the letter V. In English, if I said uh, very, it's very, isn't it? But in Africans, the letter V is pronounced as F. F. So when we went to South Africa and we're staying in a town called, uh, in English you say Berere, Berere, man. but in Africans it is called Verene, because it starts with the letter V. So we used to have a problem with the, you know, say, sorry, Verenehan, but it, then they'll say, Verenehan, because it's F. And then it's the same thing, there's a town in South Africa, it is spelled in English, welcome, you see that? But they don't pronounce it as welcome, they pronounce it as welcome, V, actually. They say, V. Amen. Okay? So I'm just giving you an example as a way to understand how to pronounce certain words. Now, it was originally known as Ma. And the word Ma is taken from the word Mara. And you know what Mara means, isn't it? It means what? Bitter. Bitter. So why were they calling it bitter? They were calling it Peter because this is the only month in which there are no holidays. <laughs> there are no holidays. That's the reason they would call it Peter. Secondly, what you need to know about this month is something crucial. It is associated with it. Remember I told you that every month is also associated with a tribe, isn't it? If you were in the other lesson. The month of Esau is associated with the tribe of Manasseh. Okay? You know, 
to steal money. Manasseh. Who was Manasseh? Who was Manasseh? Manasseh was not a son of Jacob. You know that, eh? Yeah. He was Jacob's grandson. Because Manasseh and his brother Ephraim took the place of their father and that of the Levites. Levi was set apart and served as a priest of the nation. But when it came to counting, Manasseh and Ephraim took those two positions. So Manasseh took the eighth position of the tribe. When you were counting the tribes and when they were in the camp, Manasseh took the, the position of one of the anchors, Amen. Amen. The, the eighth number. Because it was not number eight if you look at the if you are Amen. Amen. <laughs> if anything, Joseph was the second last one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But these children took up rightful position. Even his brother Ephraim took a very high position. Manasseh took eighth number. You know, the eighth number. What does the name Manasseh mean? It means to forget the past, the pain and suffering of my past. Amen. You know, it's a very important. The, the Jews would not align anything for the sake of aligning it. No. Because in the month of Teresh, we had two important feasts taking place. It was, okay, three, if anything. The celebration of the Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the year, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Secondly, what happened? Then it was a time of atonement. Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. After Yom Kippur, then it was the Feast of Tabernacles. Amen. Amen. So in the month, the, in that has just been concluded. There were so many feasts. That's why they would call this this month as Maya, because there are no holidays. <laughs> Nothing to celebrate. You get it. It's just a month, as it were. But it was the eighth month. Amen. Amen. From the sacred calendar, and from the civil calendar, it was the second month. Amen. Amen. The sacred calendar starts with the month of Nisan. Huh? The civil calendar starts with the month of Teresh. Amen. Mm -hmm. Or Teshu. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Now, the key is this. In this month of Teshu, you are doing a lot of introspective. Amen. And there's a lot of things that you have to reflect on concerning your life per se. So they would consider it as a heavy month because you're looking at your pain, your sins, the things you've gone through. Amen. Amen. Which are contrary to God. Now, as you come in this month, it's the eighth month. Hallelujah. You are beginning what? A new page, per se. Hallelujah. That's how they look at it. Secondly, they also look at this month in the sense that, okay, you know that the zodiac signs have been misused by the, by, by the witches and all these funny people, isn't it? But you can look at it from the biblical, biblical perspective and understand something. Amen. Amen. The sort of sign of this man is a scorpion. What does the scorpion do? It stings, eh? So in this month, anything that you leave hanging over your life will cause your life to be stung. Amen. Meaning, if you do not deal with certain things, 
you are giving room to the enemy to sting you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, broom, broom, and my daughter there, you must remember what did we learn about the scorpion? The scorpion spirit. They are the only ones I can be felt. You were there. <laughs> there in the garage. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what did we learn about the scorpion? How many eyes does the scorpion have? Uh, the scorpion has eight eyes. Uh, and it's the eighth month. You see that? And what are the eight important social significance of life? I'll leave that for you to digest. Because those are the areas in which the enemy tests us. Hallelujah. Yeah. So, it has eight eyes. That's why I'm saying that, you know, these, the Jews do not just take things for granted. It's the eighth month from the sacred calendar and it's a, the zodiac sign is the scorpion and the scorpion stings and the enemy can use the sting, the stinging of the scorpion to sting your life. Amen. So you, as a child of God, anything hanging over you, do not allow it because you are actually giving room for the enemy to hurt you. Hallelujah. Any room of unforgiveness, any room of harbored issues, any room of hate, any room of unresolved matters, you are allowing the enemy to sting you. Amen. Yeah. So it's an interesting month, Kesar. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You're not getting so much, I mean, what have I done? <laughs> now, you must understand that this word, who, is related to wither, to withering. Ukuma. Amen. Withering. Amen. And uh, a good reference of what happened in this month also. This month has got its own good, bad, and ugly stuff in spite of no holidays. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of the things that happened in this month is that it's a month in which Solomon finished building a temple. Amen. Let's look at that scripture. First Kings chapter 6, verses 3. First Kings chapter 6, verses 3. Blessed are they that are faithful us and keep time, for they shall be blessed with a lot of insight. <laughs> Hallelujah. Are we there? Somebody to read, please? in front of the main room of the temple was 15 feet deep and 15 feet wide. This room ran along the front of the temple itself. Its width was equal to that of the temple. Continue up to the same. The temple also had windows that opened and closed. Solomon also built some, some side rooms against the walls of the main room and the inner room of the temple. He built rooms all around. The rooms on the bottom 
floor were seven and one half feet wide. Those on the middle floor were nine feet wide, and the rooms above them were ten and one half feet wide. The, the temple wall that formed the side of each room was thinner than the wall in the room below. These rooms were pushed against the temple wall, okay. but they did not have their many beams but in, built into this wall, the seven. The stones were prepared at the same place where they were cut from the ground. Since these stones were the only ones used to build the temple, mm. there were no noise of the hammers, axes, and any other iron tools at the temple. Mm. Verse 8. The entrance to the lower rooms beside the temple was on the south side. From there, stairs went up to the second floor rooms. And from there, stairs went on to the third floor rooms. That's the same thing. Okay. And then verse, going a little bit further, sorry for that. And this, uh, okay, I'm looking for the, exactly where it is finished. Uh, verse 9, verse 9. Solomon put a roof made from beams and set up boards on the temple. So he finished building the temple as well as the bottom floor that was beside the temple. Mm -hmm. yes, this okay. bottom floor was seven and one half feet high and was attached to the temple by the cedar beams. Sorry, Pastor, I said that's 14. <laughs> also. So Solomon finished building the temple. That's verse 14. That's verse 14. Yes. Okay. Does anyone have the amplified? No wonder why he said he wants the amplified amplified. Because <laughs> it mentions also the man. The man who. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Is when he says, so Solomon finished building the temple in the man boom. It doesn't say Kepsiada. It mentions the old name for this man. Amen. Because originally, just hear this for a while. Originally, this man was known as the man boom. <laughs> Praise God for that. Originally, it was, they used to call it boom. Amen. Then when they came out of Babylon, they changed it to Keshava. Amen. I'm sure you remember at what time I had said, most of the months of the Hebrews changed when they came out of Babylon. Amen. Amen. So like this man, it was Boo originally, and it was related to withering. Because in the northern hemisphere, while it's us now we are having a situation where Plants are becoming green, isn't it? That other side, plants are withering. Uh, you, you understand? Yeah. That's why they would call it the month of what? Withering. Amen. Amen. So, sometimes you need to understand, that's how we always say in, in uh, teaching of the word, that you have to apply the word in accordance to what? Your context. Because I can't call, if this cannot be applied to say it's a month of withering, when in Zambia, if it were of your will. Amen. <laughs> you get it. Yeah. You see, so that's how come even the issue of the veil may not make sense to you and I. Because the veil is the chitamba like my, my sister is wearing one other. No, that's not the veil. The veil is what you see the Muslims women putting on, like ninjas. That's the veil. Hello? <laughs> you see, you cannot apply in the context. It doesn't relate. Hallelujah. Yes. And there's a reason as to why. <laughs> okay. So, that's how, what that month was not. The month of the widow. Okay? However, 
it is also very important to note that this is the same man in which the flood took place. Noah's flood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In Genesis chapter 7, we know that, eh? And this is 6. That's your feeling. <laughs> yeah. We know that scripture, isn't it? Genesis chapter 7. I really wanted you to get that wet bull in from the we'll get it to others because I want to get into the rest. Hallelujah. Mm. It's very interesting that the flood began when we know it was 600 years ago. <laughs> yeah? Now, what is key and amazing is that it started in this man, and Noah was in the ark. How long did it rain? The scripture says 40 days and 40 nights. Continuous rain, isn't it? But did he come out on the 40th day? No. A stay. Now, it took as long as almost a year and some days. Because he only came out of the ark. Can you imagine? It started raining on the seventh month of Hesitav. And he came out on the 17th of this seventh month, the following year. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what does that say to you? That the floods you experienced and the limitation you had, you had, you are coming out. Amen. Amen. Oh yes, that's what it means. Amen. Because Amen. it's a month where the floods began and it's the same month in which they had subsidized. Remember, when Noah was coming out, they had sat on Mount Harabat. So that's how high the floods were. Because mountains were submerged. Huh? You got to Wasamba, Wasamba. Waskwa Wami. Amen. Mountains were flooded. They didn't even know that they had rested on Mount Ararat. They only discovered afterwards. Remember, he sent. He sent one bed, never came back. He sent the other, it came back. He sent it back, it came back. The third time, it came with a twig of olive, isn't it? That was the dove. The crop never came back. Ramwankoi. Now, remember, I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go Amen. So, you need to understand. That's what happened in this month. So it's an extraordinary man. Now, if you do not have that kind of background and understanding, you will not know as a child of God what to stand on and to rebuke the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, you say, this is not time to cause any floods in my life, to you choking me, to limiting my life of what I have to do. It's time to expand. It's time for new horizons. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, it's very important. Second, thirdly, this is the month they would wait and begin to, to give glory to God. Because in the, on the seventh of this month, on the seventh of this month, they had expected that every person who had made pilgrimage to Jerusalem had gone back to their respective homes. So it's a time of returning. Hallelujah. Yeah. It's a time of returning. And when they returned, they did not return home on a sad note. They returned to their respective home with joy. Hallelujah. If there is any prodigal person in the family, trust God 
for their return. Yes. Trust God for their return. Trust God for reconciliation. Trust God for healing of relation in the family. Amen. 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 Praise God. So that's what is this month about. It's the eighth month, but it's also the second month. And the tribe associated with is the, is the tribe of Manasseh. Praise the Lord. Amen. We are done.